And now to talk a little bit about something that is really important to each and every one of us here at home, the economy. David Nelson, Newsmax TV financial anchor. He has all of the deal on Wall Street. And something that I found out about you, David, that I didn't know. <laughs> you used to play with the band The Turtles. I did. I did. I was the lead guitar player there for, 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 for a pretty long time. <laughs> Incredible. You never know. Okay. Today, the, the unemployment numbers came out. Sure. It says 7.3% is the right. unemployment rate in the United States of America. However, we have the lowest workforce participation rate in 35 years. So, you know, I'm not a real smart guy, okay? I was born and raised in Georgia. I went to University of Tennessee. You know, we count everything in multiples of seven touchdowns. <laughs> but if you have the unemployment rate dropping and the workforce participation rate dropping, right. It doesn't add up. It, it, it's masking, you know, the, the real health of the economy. Yeah, and, that, and that's, been, that's been the case really for the last couple of years. The participation, the participation rate has been dropping pretty significantly uh, over the last several years. And, yeah, we came in with 169,000. Nothing to write home about. It was actually a miss. We were expecting a little bit more than that. The, the more concerning numbers we revised down last month was, you know, just above 100,000. So... The economy, we're not really making a lot of headway on the, on the jobs front. The only bright spot I could tell you in this report is that those who are working, uh, the average work week was up a little bit. But it's still a struggle for many Americans out there who are looking for a job. Now, what are the numbers as far as part-time? Because one of the things we see happening with the looming implementation of the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act, yeah. you know, the 40-hour work week is then decimated. I mean... People are starting to drop below 30 hours even. Uh, are we becoming a part-time nation? I, I think that's being guided by, uh, by a lot of employers because they're, they're seeing the handwriting on the wall. It, it, is the, it is the law, and it's slated to go, in, go into effect. And uh, it really shows up really in the, in the service sector is where you're going to really see it in, in uh, fast food restaurants. Mm -hmm. Let's keep those work hours, uh, you know, something under 30, 29. And you're going to see, we're probably going to see more of that going forward. Part of this, you know, uh, part of this is a secular issue, Alan, I I as well. We've been exporting jobs out of this country for, for a couple of decades. And something I've always believed is that, you know, uh, you know, jobs, big muscle jobs are just go to where big muscle jobs are cheap, and yeah. that's not here, and it's not likely to be here. And what's probably what we're going through and what we've gone over the last decade and probably will continue for some more time is uh, the standard of living in some other parts of the world will, will, will rise, and uh, our standard of living may just stay stagnant, and it has been for that. And it's going to take some kind of real growth policy to knock us out of that. You know, maybe it'll be something along the lines of a, a grand bargain. Maybe we can do something about bringing the cash back home with something to do with taxes. There, there's trillions of dollars of capital that's sitting offshore. Absolutely. And, and, you know, when I look at what is happening, the tax policy, right. the regulatory policy, the monetary policy, they are all wrong for us to get out of this, you know, very weak recovery coming off of this recession. I mean, we, we're not there yet. No, we're definitely not there, and I think the tax policy, like you say, that could really be a step in the right direction. There is more than a trillion dollars that's being held offshore, and look at corporations are in business to make money, Absolutely. and that capital is made overseas. It's going to stay overseas, and there are whole divisions, for example, uh, like at, at IBM. And they look at where their capital is around the state, and they look at their workforce here in the United States. And uh, if they can do it cheaper over there, that's where they're going to build uh, their next service center, and that's what they're doing. If we had some kind of pro-growth pro policy, you know, some kind of grand bargain, let's bring that cash home. We're never going to see it. Never will we see that cash in this country, or will it do any good for Americans unless we do something to even out the corporate tax rate. See, unfortunately, I think that we're moving toward a dependency society to get more people wedded to government instead of an opportunity society to create those opportunities for small business growth, private sure. sector growth. Let's talk real quick about the Fed. You know, yeah. who's going to be the next Fed chairman and <clears throat> what's going to happen when we stop the, uh, the money train? That the Fed is doing. It, it, it's an interesting topic, and all of Wall Street, we talk about this every day. And the two names that are, that are up for grabs right now is Larry Summers yeah. and, uh, and uh, of course, Janet Yellen, uh, yeah. who's the vice chair. Now, 
President Obama has, has kind of indicated that, 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 we, uh, that he's looking towards Larry Summers. Uh, but he's getting a lot of blowback from both sides of the aisle, so I'm not mm -hmm. sure that's going to happen. I just had one strategist tell me today when I was talking to him saying that uh, he thinks it's a head fake. He thinks that, uh, that, that he really <laughs> wants Janet Yellen, so I'm not really sure. Well, I have to tell you this. We better do something as far as the policies coming out of Washington, D.C., or else we're going to destroy the, the economy of the greatest nation that the world has ever known. David? Thank, thank you for being Thank you for having me. Thanks so much for being here. Potemkin Village, folks, Catherine the Great. If you don't know about it, read about it. All right, when we come back from the break, we're going to be taking your calls, 855-777-9660, and we're going to be talking to John Rocker, former Atlanta Braves pitcher. We're going to start to peel back the baseball season as we head into the postseason. Alan West, Steve Malsberg Show. Thank you.